after spending multiple hours attempting to solve this Kaisen Sushi Facebook coding puzzle, I am convinced that it cannot be solved. I have tried creating the most atomically optimized function, which is that which you see here, and still there is one case where it exceeds the time limit. I make this video in the hope that there is some JavaScript wizard that can solve this and then share it to the world because as far as I know, nobody has solved this on JavaScript. Let's get to it. If you guys would like to go into detail of what the Kaizen Sushi Facebook puzzle is about, you guys can see it on the Facebook recruiting page or on my GitHub. I will try and run you through the basic concept. So there is this Kaizen Sushi belt, which is often seen in restaurants and it contains the amount of items that are existent on the belt at the moment, which is a number I did not use. So that's a disclaimer that you guys might be able to utilize when you're solving your problem. Then there's the D array, which contains all of the plates that will be running around for the entire existence of this puzzle. And you're supposed to be considering whether you eat that plate or not. What it depends on is K, which is your memory of the previous plates that you've eaten already. For example, the first test case, it has six plates in the belt, and these are the plates that will be running through the belt, and you have a memory of one. So, uh, at the, on the first plate, you've eaten zero plates, so your memory array would, have, would be empty. So you eat the first one. And then that populates your memory array with one. So you move on to the second one. And because your memory array is of a different type, does not include the number two, you will eat number two. So then you move on to the third, to the third plate here. And you look, you think back at your, at the plates that you've eaten and the last plate that you ate, the last is because you only have a memory of one was two and because of it's a it's of a different type you eat it then you move on to three and you think back at your last plate that you ate because it's only one memory and you see that it's the same type so you will not eat this one so then you move on to the second one you realize it's a different type you eat this one and then you do the same here and you eat the one so in the end you will have eaten these three and these two aggregating to five Moving on to a more complex case, which is test case number two, where the only difference is the memory of two. So what will happen here is you'll eat the first, you'll eat the second, you'll eat the third, they're all different types. And then knowing that these two are the last place you ate, you look at this one, you see that it's already of the same type of the plate you've eaten before in the memory of two. So you will not eat this one. Then you look at number two and you think back of the last place that you've eaten already, which are these two, and there is a two in there. So you will not eat this one either. You look back, you look at one, look at the last two plates you've eaten and you notice that it is of a different type. So you eat that one. So in the end, you'll be eating three plates plus one aggregating to four. What the puzzle is asking you to solve is how many plates you eat at the end. So you just keep count of the plates that you've eaten and you return that value. So what, what the puzzle is looking for at the very end, how many plates you've eaten. Now that we got this covered, let's move into what I've attempted. Allow me to run you through my first iteration. So I have a variable called res, which will store the food that I've eaten into an array, Be, not, not, a, not a count, because then we can refer to this array as memory of the, of the items that we've eaten by slicing out the last K amount of dishes that I've eaten. So that, that's why it's an array. Then we move into scan index, which just is which item we're iterating on, which index we're iterating on. Then we will slice out from the res, the, item, the total of items that we've eaten, the total plates that we've eaten and we will slice out just our memory, which is of length K. So now that we have that slice, we check if that it's slice includes D, if it includes the item, the plate that we're looking at at the moment to decide whether we're gonna, we're gonna eat it or not. And if we have not eaten it, we 
will eat it and add it to the res. And then we just iterate over and over and over till the end where we return the length of the items that we've eaten. This caused issues in the speed at which it was, it was processed. As you can see here, I tried running it and it exceeded the time limit on two of the cases. As a fix for this problem, I tried, I came from using this for loop to a while loop and still, I still was exceeding the time limit on two of the cases. So originally it was this for loop, then I moved it to a while loop because the while loops are, work, uh, run faster on JavaScript and it was still too, too slow. And the while loop is the fastest for loop you can possibly have in JavaScript. So this could not have been the problem. Next, on my following attempt, I tried to do away with my original plan and try to take a different approach where I would reduce the amount of items that I had to iterate over. For this attempt, it hinges on this line, this line right here where it pairs up each plate with an index. Following that, we have the plates that we, are, that we have eaten and then we toss it into a for loop. In this for loop, there is a limited slice array, which is going to return the, the last items that we've eaten. Much like the, the slice in the previous, in the previous file, this is the same thing. But the issue is during this, the creation of this limiting slice, I had to map it, which could possibly slow down the process a lot if K is really high, which could be up to 500,000. Then afterwards, I would filter out the array to only get the items left in the, in the remaining D array to only show me items that are unique meaning it will not show me any of the items that are already in the limiting slice. That means if there's 20 items with a, with a, or a thousand items with the same type as the one I just eaten, it does away with all of that. So we only have to run it once and we find the array, we, we find the plate that we want to eat. The issue with this is that I have to filter every time, every single time it runs through. And then finally, once I, once there is nothing left in the relevant array, meaning there's no plates left that are of a different type, at least it breaks out and it'll return the place that I've eaten. This one did not work because although it did reduce the amount of iterations it had to do at the ground level, it had two added loops inside, which is the map and the filter. And these actually slowed it down to be much slower than the original sushi, resulting in four cases where time limits where the time limit was exceeded. After noticing the terrible results we got from sushi two, we went back to sushi one, copied what we had here, pasted it here. But what changed is I added some gotcha cases, meaning cases that are really niche that happen once in a million but that might be the one in a million which is causing the time limit to exceed. So that's what I was checking for. And other other than everything being the same as sushi, here are here's the new additions to the code. I created a, a unique D which will get all the unique values in D which will be useful for some of these gotcha cases. This first if case checks if K is the same length as D, then we will only return the unique values, which is unique D, same as this. And we will be returning the res.length because every value, if K, if everything is stored in K, that means we are only gonna be getting unique values. So we return that and we don't even go, go into the for loop. Next thing we check, to reduce the amount, the, the length 
that the for loop has to go into is by filtering out any concurrent repetitive items. Meaning if there is a list that's like uh, one, two, okay, three, four, four, and then five, 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 five endlessly, we get rid of all these rep concurrently repetitive values because we know we won't be eating we won't be eating those so we reduce the the function to this that's the point of this filter and then we run the normal for loop but within this for loop i added one more thing which is so essentially if these if k the length of k is the same as the items we've eaten and is the same as the amount of unique items we break so once we reach that, reach that point we will break out <clears throat> and return the result again this exceeded the time limit in one case afterwards I brought in a buddy to do to run an insanity check on me and he introduced some very valuable insights first thing was that the slowdown we were able to pinpoint was in this slice includes function, which is slower than other alternatives. Like for example, set.has is faster, will run faster than running, dealing with arrays. Just running with, dealing with sets is faster than dealing with, with arrays. We also made another discovery what, that slice was also slowing down our process. So in order to deal with the slice, we created a, a different array that would be updated alongside res, which would contain the items that we've eaten already that are within the memory, within our memory. So we would push an item if stack does not include, if it's not within our memory that we already ate the plate, we would push it to to res because we're gonna eat it and then update the memory of items eaten to include that plate and this also did not work although we did try eliminating the includes with a set we ran into a lot of problems where we couldn't keep track of the last item we added because set does not store that information. And because of that, set didn't work either. Next, we thought of a huge optimization step in eliminating the first kth amount of steps, which is potentially 500,000. We did this by getting all of the unique items and setting them as the items that we've eaten here. So we get all of the unique items in K in zero to K and then add them to res and it would still store them in order so we won't have a problem in a, having a disorganized in, in a disorganized items eaten array. But even though we had this huge optimization, we still could not exceed the time limit on one of them. Eventually, after hours of testing things, we gave up and translated it to different languages, see how that would fare. And it turns out that in Java, our most basic solution, although this is sort of deviating, it is working with the stack that we had on Sushi 3, it worked without a hitch. I then interpreted what I had on Sushi to Python, and Python is not renowned for being fast, but I tried it and it did not work either. It exceeded the time limit on one again. In conclusion, after spending several hours, arguably too many, not arguably, definitely too many, we could not get it to work. We tried everything under the sun. We had two minds working on it. We had a diversity, a diverse range of thoughts on it, diverse approaches, and still nothing worked. This is the point where 
we have to put some blame on Facebook. This is a level one problem. It should not require foundational knowledge of the language to be able to solve it. Because we tried nearly everything else and we could not get it to work. I'm hoping some magician out there solves it. If they do, I can, might eat some of my words here, but this should not have been so difficult. This is a level one problem. It goes up to level four. This is rudimentary stuff that should have been easy. And as we learned when we solved it in Java, it was pretty easy. It was the same as Sushi. Well, Sushi 3 at least. And... God damn it, Facebook. <laughs> you made it so hard. Another thing to note is that Facebook did not provide you with information about the test cases. I know that in some other websites that provide you these kinds of puzzles, you are at the very least able to purchase them with in website currency, but not here. Here, you don't have any idea what's going on. You're given very little information. You're given two lines of text to try to decipher what the hell is going on. And that that is far from sufficient. So that would have been a huge boon to helping to trying to get us to solve this problem. So in some in summary, I suggest there should at the very least be customized time limits per language. That way it won't test your skills on knowing which languages are faster. That's not your objective, Facebook. But it should test your skills on thinking, logic. That's what this whole text is about. It's not asking you to figure out the best language. It's asking you to solve Kaizen Sushi, not which language. And then if you would like to go a step further, you could give us some information on the test cases. Those are my suggestions. And I hope Facebook makes things better. Thanks for watching and hopefully somebody solves it. Oh, and quick plug, I need a job. So Facebook, if you want to hire me to develop this, I'd happily do it.